Today we're talking about the PowerKitty RGB 10X. Now this has the RK3326 chipset in it, which is flipping old. This is the RG351P, which is four years old now, check the launch date. It has the same chipset. But you know, old isn't always bad. I mean, this plays everything up to PS1 reliably, which is what most people in the retro gaming scene looking for a cheap device are looking for. And so this is really just perfecting something that happened in the past. Because is it doing anything better? Is it worth buying a newer device, 9 2024, that has exactly the same chipset? Let's find out. <laughs> And you're getting a little bit of N64, a little bit of Dreamcast, a little bit of PSP even, and some Nintendo DS as a bonus. PowerKitty have been pretty good with preloading their devices with a good operating system, and this comes ready to roll with games and everything with Arc OS, which is great. I personally prefer Rocknix, so we're gonna talk in the video about adding Rocknix to this to maybe make it a little bit easier to use. Let's get into it. Firstly, I wanna thank Lit NXT for sending this RGB 10X to me. Um, they are, we're gonna talk about the price now, they are maybe a little bit more expensive than maybe buying it from PowerKitty, but you are getting shipping, free shipping worldwide. So no matter where you are, if you're in a country that's not America and the shipping is a little bit more expensive, Lit NXT is definitely worth considering. So standout features, the price. From PowerKitty's website, you're gonna get it for $40, a little bit more from Lit NXT. That is a very good price for something as nice as this is, and we're gonna talk about that. Critical issues, no Wi-Fi, and this god-awful X on the back. I mean, I love X-Men just like the next nerd, but <laughs> it just looks silly. All right, so what do we have on offer here? Uh, we, the, the colors are limited, they've got three colors. The gray doesn't look good to me. There's something about the gray with the buttons that doesn't look great to me. They've got the orange, which I have a sample here of what the orange might look like. And I actually gave the clear blue version of this device to some family because um, I thought they'd like that rather than this orange. The orange is okay if you want something like this, very playful, childlike. But this clear black to me is the best. It really looks smart and for the price, you're getting something that looks far more expensive. It has this single joystick setup, which I actually quite like. I've always enjoyed simplicity and for something that only plays PS1 reliably, up to PS1, the rest is extra, um, one joystick is fine. They've muddled up their volume button again. I don't know what it is uh, anyway, but so when you're playing, usually the volume plus is on this side if it's on the top and minus is on that side. This is the opposite. So plus is on that side and minus is on that side. And so it's a little bit confusing at first. We've got a nice large D-pad here. This D-pad is a little bit larger than other devices. I'll show that in the B-roll. It is a larger D-pad than others. For instance, like this RG351P, definitely bigger. The Retro Pocket 2S, definitely bigger than that. The 35XXH, definitely bigger than that. Um, so a large chunky D-pad is always appreciated on these retro devices. And the action buttons are a little bit larger than most. So good controls all around. So Street Fighter works well, you know, your Shuryutkins and your Horudukins or whatever they're called, uh, works well. And then I'm doing the Contra test, you know, it's very <laughs> in this world, the Contra test is very controversial. So it, it fails the Contra test hopelessly in terms of, you know, when you do this, um, you press down on your D-pad and then you wiggle it, the character moves. But in terms of playability of the game, like I mentioned, Street Fighter plays quite nicely on here. The playability of getting your gun up, getting your gun down, and it's not hampering, like I'm not seeing the character move when I don't want it to move, but it is something to note. And then your function buttons. So it's a weird choice by PowerKitty because they've done the sort of minus and plus like a switch and then they've got a st start and select on above each other and I cannot get used to it. Like start is here, select is here, and I just cannot get used to it. I press them interchangeably all the time. So there's that. But um, they've done minus plus here, start select here. Usually in retro arch, pressing start and select together twice gets you out of a game. That doesn't work here, and it would have been ideal because you just go junk, junk, and then you're out of a game. But here you have to press minus and start twice to get out of a game. So shortcuts are weird, and 
it's just strange that they went that route with the plus and the minus and the start and the select because they don't have an operating system that's custom made for these buttons. So it's just a weird choice, but that is kind of par for the course with PowerKitty. That being said, it does feel fairly thought out for a PowerKitty device. That being said, <laughs> there are speaker holes at the bottom here which serve absolutely no purpose. So like typical PowerKitty where there's, there's some great thought put into the device and then there's some like weird things that happen, you know? And that's why I say like the colors aren't great, but this one with this color and this layout really looks smart and for the price, you're getting a lot in terms of look and feel for your money. But uh, to get back to the shortcuts, you know, in terms of pressing minus and start to get out of a game, um, they've listed all the shortcuts that they've created in their manual. And then the famous rattle test. As you probably heard while I've been using it, it rattles terribly. And that's just the deal, it rattles. And then I've noted feeling in hand. Now, what I haven't mentioned so far is the feeling of this plastic. It's a lovely matte black plastic. It, this X really lets it down. Like it's, it's just like so un, Seemly, like it just doesn't fit the device, and I wish it was just clean. This etched power kit is nice, but um, I just wish they didn't have that X. Very nice feeling in hand, the candy bar style, which is you know, like a classic, and everybody loves it. And that matte plastic can't speak for the other colors, but I know with this one, it feels really nice. It feels almost premium. You've got uh, two SD card slots one for the operating system, one for the games. To note here. Lit NXT sent me a 128 gig game card, which is great, but Arc OS is not set up in the front end. You need to do a lot of tweaking to get the game's reading off this card. So you have to go into options, advanced, switch to SD2 for ROM. So you have to go into, and the options is in the front end menu, not the system menu. So you have to go in there, switch to the SD card, and then you can play the games on the SD card you've been sent. Then to get back to those speaker holes, the fake ones here, there is one here. So it's almost like Game Boy style at the bottom corner. You never really, I haven't covered it much. I mean, if, if you are the sort of person who plays like this, which is just complete savagery, but if you do, you are gonna cover that sound hole. Um, yeah. Artwork scraping now, I mentioned there's no Wi-Fi. Artwork scraping is available through Arc OS, but you will need a dongle. <laughs> so you will need one of those little USB Wi-Fi thingies, and then a USB-A to USB-C adapter, and then you can put it in, there's an on-the-go slot at the bottom of the device. You put it in there, and it will register your Wi-Fi thingy. You can set up Wi-Fi in the menu, and off you go for your artwork scraping. One of the reasons people like Arc OS is that Port Masters is quite nicely integrated into the system. Again, you're gonna need your dongle with your Wi-Fi and then you can use Port Masters because you need access to internet to use Port Masters. So the more I talk around it, you know, it's 2024, technology's gotten cheaper, PowerKitty do insist on releasing these cheaper devices without Wi-Fi. I don't know how much more it would cost them, but it is a bit of a fail. I mean, Wi-Fi is so nice with with your retro achievements, with artwork scraping, all those things. Min UI, which is the minimalist thing that which I would have put on here and then artwork scraping wouldn't have been an issue. Min UI is not available for this yet, so you stuck with the Rocknex or Arc OS options, which use Wi-Fi. It's just frustrating. So brightness, you press the plus key and your D-pad over here, and you press down for lowest brightness, you press up to get as bright as possible. Now, if we go down to the bottom setting, um, this, I've tested it in a dark setting and it's prob probably a little bit bright for people who play in the pitch dark. Not good for your eyes anyway, but if you do that sort of thing, this might be a little bright for that, but it is acceptably dim for general in low light situations. If I put it up at the absolute maximum, put it to 100%, and I go outside, we're in luck because it's a very sunny day. Sorry about the roadworks. Some fingerprints on there, but um, my terrible phone is not getting the best results here, but it is visible. It's not the brightest. It's not the mini LED of the Odin 2 Mini, but it will definitely, if you are in a pension yard in the sun, it will work. 
and I know this is the reason you're all here, is for crotch time. This is a very pocketable device. Bit of a bulge. You know, it's, it's a thick-ish device, but uh, fits in the pocket very nicely. And then weight compared to other devices. This device is 165.5 grams. The Retro Pocket 2S is 201.4 grams. The RG35XXH is 181.7 grams. The RG351P is 182 grams, 165. Lightest of the bunch. Yay. Usually I do an audio test. Let's quickly just, I've got Aladdin going here. Let's put it at full volume. There's a little bit of distortion on the high end and it's very mid-rangey. It is what it is. It sounds like a little bit better than an old Game Boy, I guess. And then build quality rating out of five. This is a cheap device by anyone's standards. And I would say the build quality rating on this, apart from the rattle, is gonna be about a 3.5 out of five, which is really high for a device at this price point. It feels very good. Now, aesthetics. So, in terms of looking at the aesthetics, you know, it's somewhere between the RG35XXH and the Retro Pocket 2S. The Retro Pocket 2S, people love it. I know um, we all hated the fact that the screen was a little bit too small for this whole body size, but it is a great, device because of the chin, they could put the speakers front facing, that was quite good audio, all that sort of thing. But in terms of aesthetics, it's the candy bar shape with these flare shoulders and we all loved it. But these two are smaller. And for some reason, the Pow Kitty has got this huge chin on the screen, a lot like the old Anbonix. The 35XXH does not have the chin, which gives it a very sleek look. So in terms of aesthetics, this has got those glossy action buttons here. I think aesthetically the Retro Pocket 2S and the Anbonic have got the win over this, but by a hair's breadth, because on the other end, this has got this nice, these nice lines in the corner here. It's got this lovely clear black plastic. Um, the action buttons and the D-pad and everything are black, which matches. Uh, the shoulder, inline shoulder buttons are great. And so, I don't know. I think if you were choosing between these, I don't think aesthetics should come into the choice making in a big way because this is a really nice looking device. If you hate that chin, then obviously don't buy it. But it is a very nice looking device, especially in this clear black. And then also something to note, it is a cheaper device, but historically we've always had these on these sorts of devices. They have a mini HDMI out port on the RG35XXH. This does not have an HDMI port. And as you can see, I struggle to get controllers working. Maybe other reviewers got it right. I used D input, X input, 2.4 gigahertz. I can't use Bluetooth, wired, but maybe an older controller would work, but you can't connect it to a TV via HDMI. A lot of people are a fan of Arc OS, and it is nice. I remember my original RGB20S. Uh, the vertical, the old vertical Power Kitty had Arc OS and me and my son really enjoyed it. It's just one thing that I actually really don't like about this and that is the fact that a lot of the features are buried in this options menu here in the front end menu. Whereas like something like Rocknex, everything is in the main system menu. So you need to go in here for things like Wi-Fi, mounting it as a USB drive to your computer, there's tools for Portmaster, and then really buried deeply in the advanced systems menu is, and right at the bottom, is switch to SD card two, which we're gonna talk about later. So I'm a fan of Rocknex, so we're gonna jump right into how to get that on here. Wait to the end for my sort of review of whether it's worth it switching to Rocknex you know, because it's all set up, ready to go. Arc OS, pretty good operating system. But I'm gonna do it and you can let me know what you think. Okay, all right, so to install Rocknix, get a new SD card. It can be a small SD card. This is a 32 gigabyte SD card. You'll also need a laptop and you'll need an SD card reader. Download the RGB10X version from here. You download this one, you just click, you'll see there's a B on the end. So if you are looking in the releases section, just make sure you get the one with the B on the end. Click on this and it will start downloading. Then also what you wanna do is make sure you've got 7-Zip on your computer. I've provided a link to 7-Zip 
and also get an app called Rufus. You'll see here in my downloads, I have provided, I've already downloaded Rufus and have that ready to roll. Once it's downloaded, go to the downloads folder on your computer. You'll see here is the, the file. I want to extract this. If I double click, I should get 7-zip open. If 7-zip doesn't open, just say um, open, um, then just right click and say open with and you should see 7-zip there. If you still don't see 7-zip, just restart your computer. And now I should be able to just drag this. So I'm just gonna drag it into my downloads folder. There we go, it's extracting. Okay, I'm gonna close 7-zip. You'll see there is the Rocknix IMG file. Now we want to take our SD card and we place it into the SD card reader. So we place it in there. Now, if you are like me and you are reusing an old card, what you want to do is use something like Mini Tool Partition Wizard. You find your SD card here is a 28.82, so that is my 32 gig card. And what I'm going to do is this is an old Rocknix installation. And what I have found, your card from the shop is going to come probably as XFAT. But what I have found is if I create a partition, it needs to be FAT32 for some reason to work with Rufus. So if you are preparing a card, this is how you do it. So I've prepared, I've deleted all the partitions, added my own FAT32 partition, and I'm gonna say apply. Make sure you don't do this to some other hard drive in your computer. Okay, see there my computer has picked up on it. Now what we wanna do is open Rufus. And we wanna say, it's already found my SD card, but here you would go looking for your SD card. It's already selected disk or ISO image. Then we go to select, and we scroll down to find our Rocknix. This is the B version. You'll see the letter B on the end there, so that is the right one for the RGB10X. And that's it. Everything gets grayed out because it figures it out for you, and you say start. Yes, make sure, yes, it is my 32 gig card and not my one terabyte hard drive on my laptop and say okay. All right, and there it says ready, which means it is ready, you guessed it. There, and you see the computer's picking up on the new card. So we just say close. Now we want to eject the card. There we go, Rocknix. Goodbye, Rocknix. And now we can remove the card from the SD card reader. Now the device is powered down and we want to remove these SD cards. This is TFOS written on the side there. That is our operating system. Put it there so we know that is the OS. On this side is the TF game. So this is TF game. That's our games card provided by the people. All right, and then we're taking our new SD card, flipping it, reversing it, putting it in there. And now we should just be able to power it on and magic should occur, Rocknix. While that is happening, this SD card, if you got a second SD card with a bunch of games and you wanna save these games, Rocknix is gonna have a little different file system for this SD card. We need to prepare this, we need to prepare it to FAT32. So, we are going to place it in our SD card reader and we are going to move over to the computer and you'll see all the goodies there. If you want to, I'm not going to do it because I am a wild animalistic savage, but what you can do is drag this to the side, have another file open here. Now let's say for instance, you've got a hard drive here on your computer or you wanna put it to Dropbox or whatever you wanna do. I know I've got this NVMe drive and it's got a lot of space in it. So I could technically put your folder, ROMs for the RGB10X. Could go to the SD card, I could control A, select them all, and I could drag them all over to that folder. But I'm not gonna do that, because as I mentioned, I'm a complete maniac. Now, what I will do is I will use that mini tool partition wizard again. Again, you don't have to do this. You can just get another card, you know, save yourself all this hassle, but you can go to mini tool partition wizard. There's my 100 at the bottom. You see 117.24, that is my 128 gig card. You see it's got a whole file system ready for ArcOS. So I'm gonna delete all of that. 
living on the complete wild side. Thank you, Elit NXT, for all these free games. Bye. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my own ROMs. There. And then I think I haven't tested this part of my setup guide, so I'm going to do FAT32. And I'm going to say apply. And I'm going to come back to my device and I'm going to power it off. You press start, you go to quit, you go to shut down system. Yes. Okay, we're going to eject our SD card from the SD card reader and just remove it. And now we're going to go to TF game. And we're going to put this in, we're going to flip it, and we're going to reverse it and put it in there. Whoops, I've accidentally powered it on as I put that in, but anyway. So now our operating system, there were actually games on here already. Um, that is now an, a spare card for another day. Okay, now the SD card should populate with things. So let's quit, shut down again, remove TF game and put it in the SD card reader. There, okay, we're going back to our computer and we're going to check it. Yep, you see a ROMs folder and some folders for ROMs. Wow, that's amazing. Now I've put a link in my description. Um, Rocknix have got a place where you can see what all these folders on the left-hand side mean um, in terms of what system they are representing. NES is your Nintendo Entertainment System, and I'm going to see if I've got some NES games here. And then I'm going to drag over the only game that matters. And then I'm just going to drag a random unknown Mega Drive game over. Okay, once you've put all your games into the relevant folders, whether you've transferred it from the, that backup folder that I recommended you do, you just used your own ROMs, um, that is up to you. Now we go back into the device. There we go, and we press power. Yeah, it's already refreshed and found all my games, so I don't need to refresh. Let's just see if they start up automatically. So already I've found some shortcuts, so if you press the minus button and your volume, which is reversed, you can do brightness. Minus and start, just like Arco X is your exit. Minus and R1 is saved. So one of the reasons I wanted to recommend Rocknix was the fact that it has very nice Pico 8 integration. There's a few little steps you need to do to get Pico 8 working here. They've got it on the Rocknix website, but you don't have internet. So you'll need to dongle it up and then get your internet connected and use Pico 8 on here. So if you are willing to go that route, go that route. Otherwise, just use the Faco 8 emulator and download carts. Rocknix and I think Arco S has favorites. It also has Portmaster here in the tools menu. And as mentioned, when you're in a game, so let's say a PlayStation, we go in there and we press the select menu. We get the games menu. Now, this will change settings within each system. So you don't need to go into retrarch, any of that stuff. You can set the way that the, the game menu is viewed. And you can go in here. You can set which emulator is chosen. You can set the aspect ratio, the way that it's, it's viewed. All the like shaders are here. Integer scaling, all that stuff is here rather than having to fiddle around in the back end. So that's the reason I like um, Rocknix more. The scrapers here, Moonlight Streaming is available. Not that you're gonna wanna use that on this device. What I do quickly wanna check now that we have Rocknix up and running is, okay, so so far wired connection in D input mode is working. You can maybe tell me in the comments if Arco S has a simple way to do this, but I found this a lot easier on this. Uh, the, the parameters here is I've got this set to D input. I've got my 2.4 gigahertz con um, dongle in here now. I went to the system menu and did the mapping thing that they have in the main menu there. I restarted the device. If someone had knows a better way for this to work on Arco S, they can tell me, but this was a lot easier to set up and do. Now I'm wishing they did have HDMI out because this would be the cheapest dockable device on the market. So maybe I've convinced you that Rocknix is a really nice system to use and if you are willing to go through that process, you can set it up nicely the way you want it. So let's put things into perspective here. 
The Retroid Pocket Mini is $200, obviously in a completely different league, but a small device for $200. The Retroid Pocket 2S, which is comparable, plays more games, but comparable device, $100. The RG35XXH from Anbenek is about $59, depending on which one you buy. The Power Kitty from Power Kitty's website is $40. A little bit more on Lit NXT. You know, it just depends what you're looking for. If you are a bells and whistles guy or gal, the Retro Pocket Mini is probably for you because it is all the bells and whistles in a small device. Or the Retro Pocket 2S, you know, still fancy and nice. But if you are a no frills kind of person who doesn't mind the fact that it is basically the RG35XXH with no Wi-Fi, then this could be you, a premium feeling, very cheap handheld.